There we go. Okay. Welcome, welcome to the Wednesday live stream. We're gonna be opening my uh, July Vegan Cuts box. I don't need these on anymore. Everything's good. Got my smoothie. How's everybody doing today? It stays light out so long in the summer. It's awesome. I mean, not so much for vampires, but... Okay, so I have here my Vegan Cuts box. We're going to open that. Uh, July Vegan Cuts box. Vegan Cuts is a vegan subscription company so every month they'll send you a new procured box of samples of different vegan snacks so that's what we're going to do here we're going to open it up my trusty old knife welcome welcome everybody you guys can hear me okay right i always have problems with the audio hopefully everything's good here and i got my et poster back up it fell down last time so didn't look right there was something missing Okay, uh, we're just gonna cut that piece of tape and open it up, open it up. Okay, so, yeah, so some of the proceeds for the Bean Cuts box always go each month to a different sanctuary, and it goes to my buddies over at Tamerlane this month. Tamerlane Farm Sanctuary over in Montague, New Jersey. I love these guys. Um, I've done videos over there with them. And uh, I need to get back down there and uh, visit. So Tamerlane Farm Sanctuary. Awesome. Glad to see that. Go check them out too, Tamerlane Farm. Okay, let's go. All right, so the first thing in here is called Iota. Not Iota, Iota. And they're classic roasted sunflower kernels. There we go, we'll put it up here to the camera. Hopefully we can get a nice, there we go, there we go. Has anybody tried these sunflower kernels? I mean, I've had sunflower kernels, but I don't think I've had these ones. All right, uh, the next one, I definitely have this brand. Did I have this flavor though? Original flavor, I've had the barbecue one. Pig out, these are vegan, yes, you. Vegan pork rinds without the pork, without the piggy. This is uh, a vegan snack called Pig Out. This is the original flavor. Um, and they're actually pretty good. Uh, I don't know about the original flavor just because I haven't had them, but the, uh, the, the I think it's Texas barbecue or one of the barbecue ones. They're, they're pretty good. Chef crafted, plant based, you know, all the stuff, all the stuff, seven grams of protein. It's all there. Uh, okay, wait, what else we got here? Oh, yeah, the artisan, artisana. I've got some of the, I've got some of their cashew butter. What is this? Raw coconut oil. Okay, I will pass this on to somebody else because you guys all know me and coconut oil. Doesn't go good with my cholesterol. But. I, hey, maybe I could use it for like, for for lotion. It puts the lotion on its skin, something like that. Or I can just give it to somebody. But um, you could tell that my air conditioner is on in the house because it's it's not liquid form right now. And any other time it would be, well, in the summer it would be liquid form. But most of the time here it's cold. So there we go. By the way, these guys also have like, I think I have some, what is it, um, raw cashew, cashew butter, and they have, I think they have like tahini and like all that good stuff. So yeah, that's a good company. Organic tart cherries, tangy and zesty dried tart cherries by Sunny Fruit, tart cherries. So... 
Again, this would be good. Put this in your um, your bug out bag when you're in the zombie apocalypse and you got to scavenge for like, I don't know, supplies and you got these, you're like, oh, you're... All right, so uh, Mala, Mala Girl Fireball Basil. There it is, Fireball Basil. You heard it first on the Vegan Zombie channel. Instant mix, savory sips. It's some kind of tea, or coffee, Fireball Basil. Sounds interesting. I like the packaging. Okay. We got so many things in this. This one's not as heavy, so there's no drinks in this one, but it's, there's like, it's just presents everywhere. I mean, look at, they're just never ending. All right, so now we have our last product here. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Superfood unsweetened, uh, what is this? Grain and seed, ancient grain. Oh yeah, there you go. Another thing that you could, uh, that would um, do well in a pantry. Non-perishable. Give you sustenance. I got my smoothie here. Mm -mm. Coconut is good for dog hair. Well, I got a couple dogs. Um, this is called Nubu? Nubu Natural Nut Butter Bites. Nut Butter Bites. It always sounds funny, doesn't it? Okay, so we're, there we go. It's, um, sorry if, okay, there we go. Nut Butter Bites. I'm trying to get the glare out of this so you guys can see it better. There we go. Without getting uh, the focus on my face. Oh, look, I'm glad I just cut my fingernails, too. So I don't look, ah. Uh, not butter bites. It's hard to read the packaging. I got to be honest with you. Um, the color of it, like, look at that. It's, it's over here. It tells all the stuff that I can't read, and obviously you guys can't read it either. But they are vegan, so everything in here is vegan. Oh, we got the nut butter bar. I wasn't sure if these were all vegan or not. I hope they are. Cliff bar, because they have some that aren't vegan. So you got to be careful there. The Cliff Nut Butter Bar Chocolate Peanut Butter. That looks super good. And here's the ingredients. Oh, can we even see them? I mean, I'm sure somebody could pause that and zoom that up and look at all the ingredients there. I need a magnifying glass for that. Chocolate Peanut Butter. Seven grams of plant, plant protein. It looks good because normally back in the day they just had like you know a lump of like the the, the crunchy peanut butter and the, the the chocolate chip and everything. They had a couple flavors at the beginning and then they started making. Now they got like tons of flavors. I just want to say this word: tea pigs. Tea pigs. There we go. Tea pigs. Okay. I'm assuming this is uh. Uh, a pigless tea. Tea pigs. There you go, guys. Tea pigs. <laughs> Licorice and peppermint. Hmm. Two flavors I probably wouldn't want to drink. But maybe you would. Licorice and peppermint. Tea pigs. I like them. I like the packaging. Shannon, I'm not really sure how much the box is exactly a month right now. Um, go to Vegan Cuts. I have a link below that'll go right over to Vegan Cuts. And I'm not sure. Maybe I think you might even be able to see $5 off when you use my code. Yeah. Um, go check it out. Vegan Cuts, uh, you know, they'll, they'll ship it anywhere in the world. But if you're outside in the United States, I believe it's going to be a little bit more. But they will ship it to you. Um, last I knew. The next thing we have here, as I'm holding my protein smoothie, is some Plant Fusion Complete 
lean protein powder. And this is creamy vanilla bean. And that's what I have. Well, no, I have peanut butter here. I love, I love the vanilla protein powder. It's like my favorite. <clears throat> this is 21 grams I need in a sip. 21 grams of protein. Plant fusion. Um, I don't know if I have had the complete lean, but I have had plant fusion before, and eh, it's really good. I like it. So there you go. So if I run out of this, which I'm almost out of, I'll have to, I'll have to use that. Okay, go goes. I almost said Suez. It looked like it said the Suez. I'm like, is this from the Suez Canal? No, it's Squeeze Almond Blend Pudding. Pudding? I was just talking about pudding. There was pudding in my last video. Did you guys see my last video? If you guys haven't seen my last video, go watch it after this. It's uh, an all-vegan grocery store that I found in L.A. We got a guest appearance from Cesar. Um, but anyway, um, chocolate pudding. Look at that. A little squeeze pudding. We had um, those little cups of pudding when I was uh, in elementary school that I'd bring to lunch. And now we have it in a little squeeze thing so you can sit there and <laughs> got my pudding. Pudding. Oh, we are almost out. We are almost out of, uh, I think this is the first time they put like this stuff in it. They never used to put that stuff in it. But uh this is called this is called maple I think maple crazy crazy go nuts maple walnuts there we go wait maple walnuts in a bag so I just had a handful of walnuts this morning I'm sure I could put some maple on it but hey if you're in a bind like I said, you need some supplies right there. Maple walnuts. I don't know. I've never seen them before. Have you guys? Okay, so, you know, there's some um, really exciting things in here. The, the go bar, the, the plant fusion, uh, the pudding, the pudding. <laughs> I, I'm interested in the pudding. Um, of course, the pig out. Um, and... Again, that's uh, proceeds are going to Tamerlane Farm Sanctuary. Now, this is one of the farms that will uh, benefit from um, proceeds from the movie that I'm doing. And um, originally, we wanted to film some scenes there too, but uh, you know, with the logistics, we might have to film it all in LA, or maybe we can do some outside shots. That I don't know exactly. How we're doing that yet yeah. um but yeah tamra lane good friends of mine so that's it for the vegan cuts box july i'll get another one next month and we'll do this again as i do every month let's get to some of these questions here Hmm. You saw a part of the movie E.T. and you were relating the small kid to the vegan zombie. I feel vegan zombie would make the movie E.T. better in my opinion. I'm not sure what you're saying there. Um, but I love E.T. It's my favorite movie. I look cherry today. Well, they did have some cherries in there, those um, dried cherries. Um, I, I don't know. Um, Julie sent me a message to talk about, to check out the uh, trailer for the movie uh, I don't know if it's already... I haven't heard anything about it. Uh, Old by uh, M. Night Shyamalan. And so I checked that out and it looks pretty interesting. 
And uh, so I recognize one of the actors, um, uh, Gael Garcia Brunel. He was in uh, E2 Mama Tambien and some other movies. And uh, yeah, it's got a pretty interesting theme. They're on a beach or something and like they start, there's like, I don't know, like some kind of time variation where it's aging them a year every half an hour. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. I love movies that deal with like space time and uh, you know, everything about that. The Heavy Metal Vegan. Thank you for that super chat, buddy. Four ninety nine. I appreciate that. And uh, the Heavy Metal Vegan, brand new vegan. Congrats, congrats on going vegan. Sent me a message the other day on my Instagram. Uh, will I donate my hair again? Probably not. I did that once. Um, I'm probably not going to cut it that short again uh, to be able to donate it. I was just talking about that. Actually, I just saw that picture last night where I ended up cutting my hair. I cut more than a foot off, by the way. It was like more like 16 or 17 inches. Hello from Russia. Love to be hated. You're a vegan too. Congrats. I love seeing um, everybody from all over the place. Medieval times. I love medieval times. Uh, um, time travel, like um, Inception. Or no, not Inception. Um, Interstellar. Uh, I guess Inception too, but Interstellar. Actually, yeah, Inception. Going into a dream of a dream and like living 70 years and only being gone five minutes. That's pretty cool. The concept. What's up, Peter? If you're just joining us, we just got done opening the uh, this month's edition of the Vegan Cuts Box Snack Box, and now we're doing a little Q and A on our Wednesday live. Coherence 2013. I don't know if I saw that. I say I don't know because there's certain movies that I'm like I totally forgot I saw. And then when I go to watch it, I'm like, wait a minute, I've seen this before. Um, but I, that doesn't ring a bell. Coherence. Still vegan in New York City. Katya. I haven't been to New York City in a, in a little bit. It's been, a, it's been about a year and a half almost since I've been there. And I only live about four hours away. When you saw the kid on ET, you saw a little of the vegan zombie. Oh, you just retracted it. I couldn't finish reading it. Um, yeah, I mean, E.T. inspired me as a kid, you know. I identified with Elliot and everything he was doing at the time. I actually did a whole video on that. If you guys want to see my thoughts on E.T., did a little podcast, bringing it right back to the 80s. And uh, I did that last month. So if you want to check that out, go check that out. Uh, I still have a lot more videos to put out for you guys. And I went, when I was in L.A., to the E.T. house, so I will... I do have footage in there of that video, but I'm going to actually put that footage up probably in like kind of like a vlog video that I'm going to try to put together um, bits and pieces of everything I did when I was in Dallas and L.A. last month. The Tomorrow War did not see that, uh, but I know what you're talking about. Do I ever think about living somewhere else in the world? Yeah, I do. Um, I think about a lot of things, a lot. In fact, I'd love to sell my house right now. The problem is buying a house. Houses right now are, I mean, I could, my house would sell right now for so much more money, but the problem would be trying to buy a new house to live in. 
I'm like, oh, I can, you know, collect all this money from selling my house, but then I would be homeless or wasting my money on like an apartment, which I don't, I don't know. I, I thought that it would be better to buy a house. That's why I bought the house. I've been living here for 10 years and some weird things have happened. The newest weird thing is, okay, let me tell you this story. Okay, so I've been living here for 10 years. And, you know, with the exception of when I go out of town, you know, I'm here every day and I let my dogs out every day. I know Zeke's only been here for a couple of years, but Indy's been here for the majority, a good 10 years. Indy's uh, going to be 11. So every day I go outside and I let him out back to go potty and, uh, you know, play in the grass and then come inside. And every day, you know, I look around and, you know, you know, there's a window down, down the bottom, like right when you go outside the door, there's a window there. And, um, well, I would always stare at that window when I would go outside or when I was uh, printing t-shirts because I print my own t-shirts down in my basement and usually I'll print the t-shirt uh, and then I'll put the dryer over the heat thing you know you got to put that over it for a good 30 seconds so I'll sit there and I'm waiting and I'm staring out the window and I see that window and I you know you start thinking random things like could anybody break through that window I'm sure they could and uh, but I always noticed there's a little crack in the window I'm like yeah there's a little crack there because I know when I when I went to buy the house, there was something different there. Because the guy that owned the house before me apparently was a woodworker, so there was this contraption that he made that would blow. Um, you know, he'd be like, you know, wood shavings would go everywhere as he's like, you know, cutting wood in the basement, and everything. So it was like a ventilator kind of thing. And then when I went to look at the house, they're like, oh, we'll take that out of there and put the window back. So there was a window there, a glass window. And I. I've known this because, you know, if you see something different, you notice, right? You know, for seeing something for so long. And then just a couple days ago, I'm out there with the dogs and I'm looking down and I'm like, I need to clean that window, you know, and I went down and because I, I had the hose out. I had the hose out. And why did I have the hose out? Because I was filling up a container to go water some plants. And then I was like, I'm going to clean this window. So I went to clean it off and I saw it was like, it was kind of bowed out a little bit and it wasn't a window at all. It was like plexiglass. And I'm like, okay, I know for a fact that this was a window. This was glass. And I've never, like, what happened? Like, am, am I living in a Mandela effect? Um, and then I started like going off trying to find any old video of mine that might show that window back years ago. And I swear to you, that was a glass window. And now it's not a glass window. It's a piece of plexiglass that is bowing out. And that's how I noticed it. It's like, wait a minute, that's bowing out? Like, I know that I look here every day. Like, I know something's off. And I got a, I got a pretty good memory. So, like, it, it was never plexiglass. It was always window. Because I always thought, like, this window's going to break. I've touched it. I, I've saw the little crack in it. it. There's no crack anymore. It's just a piece of plexiglass. So either I'm losing it, I'm living in an alternate reality, or somebody took my glass window out of there and replaced it. But why would anybody do that? It doesn't make any sense to me. I'm completely confused. That's my story. Uh, no, Ralph, that's the thing. My old tenant left. Back in 20, end of 2017. So I've been here like four years now, four years since my tenant. So I've lived here for 10 years, but I'm going on 11 years, but one year I had a tenant live here. No, I, no, no. It's, I mean, th I thought that. I thought, did they break it and put something else there? No, because after that, um, I qualified for, um, this company came and they, in, they, they put insulation in my house. So they sprayed all this insulation stuff down through like the cracks of the basement and everything. And I noticed they went around the window and that wasn't during the time that my tenants, that was after the time that my tenants left. So yeah, really, really weird.
Did I change the locks when I moved in? I did, no. Wait, yes. Did I? <laughs> um, yeah, I did change the locks when I moved in. And I changed the code for the garage. And since my tenants moved out, I think I changed it one more time. Yeah, I don't know. It's crazy. It's that's it, either somebody's playing a prank, a weird prank, but why would they go through the trouble of that? Also, if anybody comes near my house, my dog Indy goes crazy and he will start barking. And when, when that happens, when Indy's going crazy barking, Zeke is like, all right, he's barking. Everybody's distracted. Is there any food I can sneak? That's what Zeke does. Yeah, some weird things. Yeah, weird things have been happening. Um, decayed spawn. Let's see. Uh, I can read the 25. Is the rest of the stuff in Russian? I do have cameras on the house, but just not there. The government is messing with me. It's weird. It's so weird. Rachel broke in and she fixed it without telling you. No, when I told her, she just looked at me like I was crazy. I'm like, is the Mandela effect real? Like, was it never glass? And I just like, I know it was glass, but. And part of the reason, like I said, how I noticed it, it not only did I go down to clean it off, but I noticed that it was kind of bowed out. And I'm like, it's never been like that before. When you see something, like what would you do? Like, okay, so what would you do if you, ha you have a tree in your yard and it's been there ever since you've lived there and one morning you got up to go outside to get in your car or whatever and there was no tree in your yard and there was no evidence that there was a tree missing from your yard. There was grass there and everything. Would you, that's how I feel right now. Yeah, I feel like she would just I thought I was crazy. Mandela effect. Um. Anyway, I got some weird things that have been happening here lately, so I don't know. It makes me sound crazy, so I won't tell the rest. But that was one of them. That's just really weird. Somebody stole my window and put a new one there. I don't know. That's what it feels like. My house is alive. Jacob, Jacob's running around my house. The tree walked away. Anyway, any other uh, questions that you guys want to talk about while we're here? Maybe I'll answer, maybe I won't. Have I seen synchronic or boss level? Uh, no, I haven't. But there's been a lot of synchronicities going on here, like a lot. Random comment from Nikki says, my husband and I went to Bell's. It was delish. Thanks for the recommend recommendation. Um, awesome. I'm glad to hear that. That's so awesome. Um, I wish it was closer. I would go back again too. Watch out with Google Nest products. I heard they're collecting data from your smart 5G home. Google prog products like what? Guys, I'm not gonna, I do have a good re memory, but I'm probably not gonna remember these movies, you guys are. I need to write these down. And my old little notebook. So we got we got boss level. We got synchronic. Not not to be confused with chronic, but synchronic. And then what was the other ones? Uh, Palm Springs. 
I think I wrote that down last time, but I didn't see it. No, Palm Springs, and then what was the other one earlier? What's up, Lolly V? Yep, you you came a little bit late. We already opened up the snack box, but you can rewind. You don't even have to rewind. You just click back. Who are they? Who knows? Yeah, they, they, they've probably been doing that for a very long time. They just say that they don't. I mean, just ask uh, Snowden. Oh, your thermometer to control the AC. No, I don't have any of that stuff. I got the old-fashioned go downstairs and do it yourself. We were talking about in the last live stream on the other channel, uh, who, who would be interested in watching me play uh, a, a game of chess live against uh, Vegan Gains? I do, I, do, uh, I do live streams of chess sometimes over on my Twitch channel. Yeah, um, I do have a few cameras in here, and I, anytime, like, sometimes I, like, put them down, you know, so they can't, because, you know, you don't know, like, they're not hooked up to the internet. Well, I mean, they, they're hooked up to my internet, but I don't buy the service to have, like, 24-hour or, you know, more than 24-hour coverage. It goes away after that, but I can go on from anywhere on my phone and look at my cameras. Like, I don't have to be home. I can be anywhere and look at my cameras, and I can talk through them. Like, hey, pups, what's going on? Like, that kind of stuff. Um, they never react to it. I mean, they may look up at it, but, like, I'll be like, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do they, they don't listen to me unless I'm actually there. Roof rat problems. I, I wouldn't have the, I don't even know what that is. Roof rat problems? I don't, I don't even know. Um, I had mice in the house and I caught them with my with um, this eco-friendly trap. I don't know if it's eco-friendly, but it's like a humane trap. You put them in it, then you catch them in it. And then you find out that they're in it and you're like, oh, we're going for a little trip. And then I did a video on it. Uh, drive someplace, let them out, let them go. Happy, happy to be back in the world. Um... You could try that, maybe. Maybe they have some rat traps that are humane. Vegan Gains killing it with the streams lately. Fell asleep. Wake up. He's still going. Yes. Um, I've done that before, but... Um, I got all this other stuff to do, so I haven't been able to do that lately. I haven't been able to. See. He says he he plays chess, but have you guys ever seen him play chess? I don't. I don't know how good he is or anything. He might beat me in just a couple minutes. Um, you're used to getting ignored, haters. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I used to have animals going in my roof from where the chimney, I used to have this chimney, and it was pulling away from the house. And I had to take it down. Um, code inspector. And, um, yeah. So I had it all planned to take down and then and then the neighbors complained as I was getting it taken down 
and then they came back and then I had to pay an extra $800 just to find out if it had asbestos in it. I'm like, but I'm already taking, and they're like, nope, we got to do that. And I'm like, and then uh, it didn't, no asbestos, but um, I still had to pay the bill. I wasn't happy about that. But anyway, I don't have a chimney anymore. And then they sealed that up so animals couldn't go up there anymore. So I don't, I used to have them like running around, but they, they don't do that anymore. You had an iguana living in your roof? Iguana from Tijuana? He doesn't play regularly? Oh, chess? Am I in Vegan Gains real life friends? I'm not in Canada, no. I'm not in Cam Canada. Um, I've met Vegan Gains in person once. Uh, we went up to t Toronto, and then he met us up there with Anne-Marie. Anne-Marie was there. We, we met with Anne-Marie first, um, me free athlete. And then she called Vegan Gains, and then he rode his motorcycle up, and then we went to dinner, and we hung out for a little bit. Um, I did a quick little video with him. We did a live stream at a, at a we were on the Vegandale Road of uh, Toronto. And we went to this like um, pastry place. The, they were about to close, but we, uh, we did a quick little live stream there. And then, uh, and that was it. So I met him one time. They probably ate the bugs. Well, we got some rat problems in the world. I saw a lot of rats when I lived in New York City. Actually, I saw a, the biggest rat I ever saw was up here. <laughs> it was funny. I was driving. It was nighttime. And I saw this huge thing walk. I mean, it was, it was like that big. It was walking through the road. I'm not even exaggerating. It was walking through the road. It was a rat. And I stopped. And, I, and some other guy coming the other way stopped and I'm looking at this thing going across the road and I look up and make eye contact and this, this random guy that was driving that stopped, he looks at me, he's like, what the, he's looking at me and he's looking at that and I'm like, I don't know. And then we just kept driving. Huge rat. What state am I from? I'm, I'm from New York, upstate New York. And that's where I am right now. Shannon wants to know what's a good thing to say to someone when they're rude to you when you tell them they don't eat meat. Honestly, I, I really don't care what people say if I, if I tell them um, that I don't eat meat. Usually it's, I don't really go out of my way to, to, to say it um, these days. But if somebody does ask me, like if they ask me, I'll, I'll straight up, I'll just tell them, I'm like, no, I, you know, I'm, I'm vegan. I don't, I don't eat meat. And then, it, then if they're rude, you know, I mean, there's so many, it's, it's all, for me at least, it's all like that individual conversation. It could be, there's so many different answers. There's so many different, I mean, you could, I would say, you know, just, you know, try to keep your cool and just be nice. And uh, I don't know, but if they're, if they're, if there's no way, if they're just sitting there making fun of you, usually I just school them or I just don't talk. I mean, I don't have that really happen anymore. But if it's somebody like somebody that you can't really avoid, like a family member or a friend of a family or something like that, then yeah, I mean, there's just educate yourself and I don't know. I, again, it's 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 all an individual thing. If you're non-confrontational, maybe don't really say anything. Um, but if you are, you know, I mean, the facts are on our side, you know. So so usually when somebody says something like, uh, like I, I'll make a lot of posts or something and somebody will be like, like today I posted something about vegan bacon and uh, somebody would be like, um, or even not that, like if I, like if I just, you know, say something vegan and you can tell they're trying to troll you, they'll be like, oh, I just had, um, 
you know, a, um, I just had a, 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 a meal of chicken or something. And I'll be like, oh, cool, you know, like, you know, like what kind was it? You know, I, there's, there's some really good Gardein chicken. And, like, I'll just, I'll just talk as, as if it was vegan. Like, they think they're trying to troll you, but like, oh, I just eat a big juicy steak. Oh, man, I just had like the best seitan steak. So good. Just, I mean, I know what they're trying to do. There's no, there's no reason to like add to the argument. Just say something like, just troll them right back like that. That's what, usually what I do. But you know, you never know. Like I had this one instance where, and I don't know if this person's still watching or not, but years and years ago, um, I would make a, I would make videos, and they were all the cooking videos, mainly with John in them, and and somebody just started trolling, just being like you know, so anti-vegan and everything. And I responded like very friendly. And I was like, I was like, oh, well, you know, maybe you could try this. Or if you have any, you know, questions like, you know, like we're, we're more than willing to help you out there and everything. And then his answer to that was like, man, I was trying to troll you guys and you were so nice that like, I, I'm, I'm subscribed to you now and I'm going to try to go vegan, you know? So that like, I didn't expect that, but that was pretty cool. And uh, and I saw him comment for the next few years. I don't remember who it was now. It was so long ago. But yeah, you never know. Just today you were told that vegan food is gross. You bought this person cookbooks that are full of good food because they have the heart attacks and stents. So I got them off oil-free, vegan cook. Well, when people say that, see, it, it's always, I've always felt this way when somebody said that, you know, if, if I'm eating tofu or something like, oh, that's gross. I'm like, wait a minute. You're saying that what I'm eating, this is like almost like straight from the plant. It's very, barely processed at all. It's straight from a plant. And you're telling me this is gross, but you're eating the severed muscles and tendons of an animal cooked up. You're putting that in your mouth and you're drinking secretions of a cow and you're telling me that this is gross? Like, it, it, it's really backwards, isn't it? I've always felt that way. Like, like you, you, like for instance, you know the end of The Great Outdoors? This is way before I was even vegetarian or vegan. The end of The Great Outdoors, the, the comedy movie with John Candy where the raccoons are eating the garbage and they say, hot dogs, I don't eat hot dogs. Do you know what those are made of? And then, if you guys know the movie, you know what it's made of. Well, that, that left an impression in my little child head and I was like, Ugh, you know, and to this day, it's like, I don't look at food like, oh yeah, you're eating a burger, you're eating a hot dog. Like I break it down in my head like immediately and I'm like, you know what you're eating? That's gross, you know? Maybe that's why I don't eat mushrooms either because I know it's like a fungus. I'm like, Ugh, you know, I hate mushrooms, but I'm maybe I'm just weird like that. Was that like the Napoleon Dynamite? Do I fast? Sometimes, sometimes, uh, sometimes I fast unintentionally. <laughs> What's the grossest plant food I can think of? Well, I guess, I guess mushrooms aren't really plants. They're just fungus. So that, that would, that would not be there. Um, the, the grossest plant food, grossest. All I can think of is mushrooms. It's like, get your mushrooms. That's not a plant. Um, I like pretty much everything. I mean, there's things that I don't like, but I don't think that they're like straight up like the gross, like I don't like water chestnuts. I just don't like them. Um, but I don't think like they're the grossest thing out there. It would probably, if I could say mushrooms, it would be mushrooms, but can we just add that in the plant group? Maybe I just can't think of something right now. Yeah, yeah, th that was the other thing. Did I mention that? Because I, I thought I did somewhere in that ramble. But yeah, like you can always just ignore the person. Like it doesn't really matter. What is their opinion on? It doesn't really matter. You you know what you're doing. You know what you're trying to do. If you can, if you think you can, get some kind of education into them, or they're gonna listen to something you're saying. You don't know. Maybe just spout out a couple facts, or maybe say nothing at all.
I don't really like okra either. I don't think it's the grossest, but I don't really like it. Durian wasn't the grossest. I tried durian, did a, a video on it. It was, it was weird. It definitely was weird. And I don't think I would sit there and snack on durian. But I, I don't think it was the grossest thing that I ever ate. It was weird. Like, I, I don't think I really liked it and I don't think I really hated it. Because some people are like really hate it. That's what people say. You either love it or you hate it. And I was like the weird one that was like, I don't really love it and I don't really hate it. <laughs> Your greedy ass loves all things vegan. Oh, not me. I know there's other things that I don't like. I just can't think of it right now. All I can think of is like things I do like. It, I mean, when it comes down to it, it's not, it's not gross. They just, they're just in their, how can it be gross to be a vegan? You know, there's so many things you can eat and you know, everybody has a preference. So you might not like certain food. That's fine. But there's so many foods you can eat as a vegan. Like if that, if their, if their version of a uh, not gross food is like a, a big slab of burger, which we know is gross. I mean, we can make that vegan and, and make it replicate pretty much what they're doing without being what it actually is so we can eat complete what what i would consider like non-gross i don't non-gross foods like a banana and apple i mean all these things are vegan straight from the source um probably the best foods you can eat I and mean, you can eat all these processed foods too that are vegan that i don't think are gross you know pizza Burgers, vegan, everything. Everything is vegan. You can veganize everything. Your garlic turned blue today? Oh, you know what? I've seen garlic turn like, you know, like veins of blue or whatever, kind of like purplish. You're not a fan of beets, okra, Brussels sprouts, cooked tomatoes. Um, let's see. I like all those if they're cooked right. Like I can make Brussels sprouts taste good, to me at least. Yeah, I know. That's the funny thing, Holly, is people do. People eat vegan stuff all the time without realizing it. They're like, oh, I could never, I could never eat any vegan food. Vegan food is gross. It's like as you're eating your mashed potatoes or you're eating a baked potato or French fries, um, you've never had an apple. A lot of apple pie is vegan. Um, bananas, you never had banana before. Um, a lot of bread is vegan too. I mean, there's a lot of vegan stuff. You never had bacos. Bacos are vegan. Hmm, what else? Blended cooked tomato. That sounds good. Make a good sauce with it. That's what I'm saying. What's more gross than dead body at your table? Because that's what it is. And, and when you get away from that thinking, which I have been for so many years, that's all I can see. That's all I can think of. And it's disgusting. And it smells. I can tell when somebody's making something not vegan. Uh, Kate G says, thank you for your educational videos. Getting two vegan cookbooks today. And I'm super excited. That's awesome. Feel my relationship with food has been better since going vegan and your videos really helped. Thank you, Kay. That's great to hear. Um, I can relate to that because um, after I went vegan, my whole freaking world expanded with different foods and different cultures of foods and just 
experimenting with different foods. It's like there's so many more things. And, you know, before that, it was just like, what? Uh, hot dogs, hamburgers, grilled cheeses. Like when I before I was vegan, it was all the same stuff. I guess my mom didn't really make too many different foods. She would stick to the, like, you know, spaghetti and pasta and, and all those other ones. That, you know, tomato soup and uh, tuna noodle casserole. Yuck. Disgusting. So, you know, now I'm making food for her. Your favorite food has always been French fries. I mean, French fries is always a staple, right? I mean, I remember so many times going with friends to restaurants and there was nothing I could eat, so I would get French fries. It was That was it, French fries. Sometimes I would say, like, hey, do you have, like, bagels there that were vegan? And then I would try to, like, you know, go to the salad bar and make, a, like, a, a sandwich with the bagel, with lettuce and tomatoes and onions, like, everything that I could find that I could put on it. And, uh, you know, a little bit of oil and vinegar on there. And, you know, hey, to me, it was good uh, with some French fries and stuff. And they would get all their nasty food. And that's how it was back in the day before, you know, you'd find vegan restaurants anywhere. Coconut bacon. Yeah, it's, yeah I have a recipe for coconut bacon in my cookbook. It's pretty easy to make. It's a good topping too. You can use it as like little bacos, crumble it up. Yeah, Mavericks, uh, mushrooms, not my favorite thing. Uh, no, I haven't, I haven't seen the Beyond Chicken anywhere. You tell people you don't eat anything that had a face. And products that came from that, and it keeps them from asking about fish. Yeah, yeah, seriously. I mean, I've had that question so many times. It's like, I'm like, oh, I'm a vegan. I don't eat any animals, any animal products. Oh, okay. But you still eat chicken, right? No, chicken's an animal. Oh, okay. But so you can only eat fish then? Nope. Fish is an animal. Fish, has, fish is, you know, there's, you know, you, fish is a meat. Oh, but the, yeah, but they don't, they, they eat fish on Fridays. Because, no, f fish is an animal. Um, what about eggs? Nope, eggs come from an animal. Okay, so yeah. And then they, and then they don't realize, you know, the other things that, like honey. <coughs> honey. <coughs> My dog. See, he's all the way up here and he heard somebody out front. I didn't hear anybody. It's in 400 different restaurants. I hear it's good. 400 different restaurants and they couldn't send me any. I am so sad. No, I haven't seen it anywhere. If I see it, I will definitely pick it up and try it out. Since you went vegan, you like spicy food more? I, you know, I try some spice, but I can only get to a certain point and then I just, I won't try it. My next video is going to have some very, very spicy things in it. It's going to be a fun video, hopefully. I don't want to like work it up and not be a fun video, but there is some fun things in it. Stay tuned for that. But yeah, I can only really get up to, I can't even really do sriracha sauce without like, you know, kind of like taking it down a notch with like some other kind of sauce mixed in with it. Um, but I can do like Frank's Red Hot. And that's about as, as hot as I like to go. I can do the, the Wegmans buffalo sauce. I like kind of just put a little drizzle a little bit on like I did with the pizza the other night that I posted. And, you know, sometimes if you mix it with maybe a little bit of barbecue sauce, it kind of takes the, the hotness down, all the spiciness down a little bit. But, um, yeah, if it's, if it's just a little bit, I like it. It's a nice flavor. But uh, other than that, like if it's too hot, it just ruins my experience because then I can't enjoy my food. Everything's too hot. And I feel like, especially if I go out to a restaurant, that I just wasted my money. Because I, like I like to taste my food and enjoy it, not sit there and be like, oh my God, my you know, nose is running and, and my face is burning off my head. You ever have that happen? Your face just burns right off your head. Finish about honey. What do you mean finish about honey? It's not vegan. Uh, it comes from an animal. It's regurgitated. So it's almost like bee vomit. They got two stomachs. 
They, they take it back to their place and they regurgitate. And then people are like, ooh, bee vomit. Is it, wait, you're saying that veganism is a fad diet? So that's actually not true. So veganism is not a fad diet. Um, it's not a diet at all because you can be a junk food vegan. You can be an overweight vegan. You could be an unhealthy vegan. Veganism, that's part of the reason why I made this channel. See, I've been vegan for 27 years. And one thing that I noticed, and this is coming, I feel like I'm an expert on the subject because I've been vegan almost all my life. I've seen it go from literally nothing to where it is today. And one thing that I can tell you without a doubt, I've seen veganism grow and grow and grow. Fad diets come and go, and then they're never heard of again. Um, vegan is not a diet, but as a vegan, you have a diet. So you have your vegan diet, but you take that out of the, out of the equation, you know, vegan is a lifestyle. Vegan is a compassionate lifestyle. But I see where you're coming from. You're trying to talk about just the diet. It's not a fad and it's not an eating disorder. Anybody doing the eating disorder is not promoting veganism. Um, it's something that's not going away. It's only getting more and more popular. More and more people are doing it. And it's simple. It's the right thing to do. And um, if it was a fad eating disorder, then, hey, I wouldn't be 27 years vegan and being in the best shape of my life. Okay, so, I mean... You're 100% wrong there. You can have your opinion, but it's wrong. Uh, what else? People are still people are still uh, sharing that of the viral uh, meme that I did. Uh, it was it was an accidental meme, but it was it was perfect example of this. Um, so a couple years ago, I did a video and um, somebody commented on my video and said, you know, stop the vegan, stop your vegan diet. You look awful. Your skin looks bad or it ruins your skin and you look like you're 35. They thought I was 25. And I my answer, like this was like, a huge gotcha moment. Like, how could I not respond to this? Right? And they said, "You look like you're 35. Your skin it ruins your skin and your life. Stop the vegan uh, diet." And and I responded. I was like, "Well, thank you. I'm actually 44." Um, so yeah, it was last year. So I'm. So they thought I was 25. They thought they were dissing me by saying I look 10 years older but I was actually 10 years older than what they thought I was. So, I mean, obviously they deleted the comment, but not before I screenshotted it. And people are always, I mean, somebody posted it a couple of days ago. Um, it's just, it's really funny. Perfect, perfect burn. Probably the best burn I've ever had. Your cholesterol went from 212 to 160 going vegan? Yeah, my buddy uh, had a whole video of it. He lost 40 pounds. Uh, he was overweight. He was uh, like at a pre-diabetic range. And within a month and a half, he lost 40 pounds being, you know, whole food vegan. And his cholesterol went from about what you just said, 260 somewhere on there to about 150, 160. I mean, perfect cholesterol after doing that. And he felt great. Dropped a lot of weight, felt way better. Got before and after pictures. Got a whole video on it, really. Younger, I mean. Did I say that wrong? I don't think I said it wrong. They were trying to troll me, but they were, they actually complimented me, yeah. Raw nuts or roasted nuts? What are better? I like the raw ones better. The raw ones are better for you. Although, you know, um, you know, cashews are flash roasted. They have to be because cashews in the wild are really poisonous. So you can't eat cashews in the wild. Like you can't just pick them and be like, hmm. You'd be like, Ugh. so they got to flash roast them to get them off the the stem. But they're still considered raw. I don't. I, I shouldn't say flash roast. Flash heat. Flash heat them. But yeah, raw 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 nuts are. Uh, in my opinion, I think they taste better too. But they're um. 
I guess you could roast your own. Like I've done that, you know, candied roasted pecans or walnuts, you know, and add that to like a nice salad or something. You could do that. Why are meat eaters being so rude? I don't know. I mean, it happens everywhere, you know. There, you know, Some of it is just an individual thing. Some people are, I don't know. I, I feel like there's like a deep down guilt because they know they're doing, they're not, they know they're doing harm to animals. They know they're killing, they know what they're doing. Um, so they have to make fun of or try to troll vegans and stuff. Do I still do oil? I don't cook with oil. I don't add oil to anything, but I do eat processed foods that have oil in it. Today it's been just the smoothie. Usually that's what I do when I uh, when I get up. I have a smoothie, and then that holds me off for a for a good amount of time, and then I'll then I'll eat other stuff, whether it's processed food or. Other, I juiced a watermelon, watermelon and lime. It's a really good drink. I had a whole mason jar of that. That was super good. But last night, what else did I? I made a pizza. I had a vegan Amy's pizza that I got at the store for bargain. It was only three bucks, which is normally like eight or nine. So I had some of that. Oh yeah, that's the that's the silly silent. Uh, have you ever been asked, would he, would you, what would you eat if you were stranded on an island? Would you eat bugs? I was asked that when I went vegan in high school by a teacher. You know, that's like the what if, you know, that's like they're trying their hardest to get you to say that you wouldn't be, they want, they, for some reason, there's like this weird fetish that they don't want you to, they want to get you to say something like you would eat something that wasn't vegan. And, you know, like, what would you do if you were on a stranded island? Um, would you eat, uh, if it was just you and a pig on a stranded island? It's like, well, eat what the pig's eating. Like if there's a pig on an island, they're eating some kind of vegetation. Um, how many people, realistically, I mean, it happens, but it's like 0.0000000001% of the entire population. How many people find themselves stranded on a desert island? Not many people. I don't think I'll ever be in that position ever in my life. Oh my God, I just saw my foreshadowed future of me stranded on an island. Oh my God. Um, so, and then I'm going to like think back to this moment when I said, I'll never be, oh my, why did I say that? I should have knocked on some wood. Okay, but yeah, I don't think I'll ever be on a deserted island uh, in that situation. But uh, who knows? I love watermelon. You live in Florida? I used to pick um, avocados and mangoes and oranges off trees just around the place when I lived in Florida. I remember one day we had a whole garbage bag full of mangoes. Who needs honey when we have dates? We There's dates, there's agave. Um, my favorite sweetener is just, just organic, plain, pure maple syrup. What the? Yeah, I would never eat an animal. Like it's just, it, it, I don't consider it food. If there was nothing to eat, I'd starve. There's, it, I don't consider it food. Sorry. I'm not gonna be like, yo, can I start chewing on your arm? what vegetarians eat when they cheat? Well, I guess they're not vegetarians. The other thing is, is like, I, you know, I don't know about other people, but I can only speak for myself. I don't like crave non-vegan food. It's actually quite disgusting. It's repulsive to me. So if I see a, you know, somebody sitting down with like a nice big juicy, like I, I see where that's coming from. 
It doesn't look good to me. I don't want it. I, n I never liked meat before I went vegetarian. I mean, yeah, I would eat meat before I was a vegetarian growing up because that's what my parents would make me eat and stuff. But I mean, I just, as a vegan, how many times have I taken a napkin and spit my food into a napkin as a vegan? As a, before I was a vegan, when I was eating meat, I used to do that all the time, several times a week. You didn't try to eat a piece of steak. Ugh, can't chew it. Yuck. Spit it out. It's gross to me out to even like pretending to do that from back then. It's like, ugh. You know, uh, I don't miss any food that was not vegan. There's nothing I miss. People always say like, come on, there's got to be something. There's nothing. It's all disgusting. It's all repulsive. I can't understand. Honestly, I can't understand how people can eat that. You know, I mean, I know that I've lived this way for a lot longer and I, I can see it more clearly than somebody that's not a vegan, but oh man, I don't know how they put it in their mouth and started eating it and, and put it in their body. I just don't understand. Oh yeah, that sucks. I would just, you know, if I had people that in my family or something that I would just make vegan food. I'd be like, hey, there it is. If you're hungry, you'll eat it. If not, sorry. I don't have any, there's nothing in my house that um, has touched non-vegan products. Like there's all of my cooking ware, silverware, everything, my refrigerator, no non-vegan products at all. And, you know, and, and I, I, you know, I wasn't able to do that until I finally bought my own house. You know, I'm like, this is my house. I'm not allowing anything not vegan in my house. I'm sorry, but you know, that's, that's how it is. Um, you know, before that I lived with my family, with my parents, or I shared an apartment with different people, which, you know, we sh shared a refrigerator where they weren't vegan and I was vegan, but it it just you know all that stuff like you know it's just how it, not everybody has you know their own place where they can do that so like it, you know all the way up until what 10 years ago when I finally bought my house I had to share that with people and to me it was gross but you know like you got to do what you got to do there's a good one Valerie <clears throat> We see colors to identify ripe fruits. I have heard that veggies and have long arms to reach for those foods. Um, yeah, the co the color thing would um, sounds. I don't know about the arm thing, but the color thing sounds plausible. I mean, but will we ever know for sure unless we had a time machine? Your parents forced you to eat meat and make you believe we have to eat it. Well, my poor parents used to do that too when I was a kid. I went vegetarian when I was 14 and I was very stubborn and they used to tell me that, well, if you're hungry, you're going to eat what the rest of us eat. And, and I wouldn't. I would make my own food. I would, that's when I started having to get creative because my mom, she didn't support me and my and she wouldn't make me special food. Um, but she's completely different now. She makes vegan food all the time. I mean, um, she's pretty much vegan now. I don't I don't know if she's completely, if like she'll eat something when she's out somewhere. Um, but she's way different now than she was when I was younger. And then after my two younger brothers followed suit and they became vegetarian, then she started making like dishes that we could all eat. And then I went vegan. And now it's like, yeah, she's always making vegan stuff now. Now it's like, it's rare to see anything not being vegan made. It's just my dad that doesn't make vegan stuff. Um, but yeah, they used to say I used to have to eat the same stuff. And I just was like, no, I'm not going to eat it. Um, and I would just make other things. I started learning to make different rice dishes and different pasta dishes. And then, you know, like, you know, being a kid, like I would eat, a, you know, peanut butter and jelly and cereal and, you know, just stuff like that. Um, and that's how it started for me.
but yeah, w- nobody knew back then either. Like they, they don't, they don't know anything about it really. And they used to tell me like, oh, well, you better be careful. If you, if you're a vegetarian, you're not eating meat. You better, you better take vitamins and supplements. And then when I said I was going vegan, they're like, vegetarian is one thing, but vegan, you're really going to make yourself sick. And I'm like, wow, you seem to know everything, but you know what? It didn't make me sick. And I actually felt way better. Uh, just a couple weeks after going vegan and you know, this is a true story. So I felt, I felt the boost in energy. I felt great. And, uh, I never got sick. In fact, I've got a really good record of not getting, not getting sick. I got a pretty good immune system. And, uh, and I'll tell you the other thing, which a lot of you have been following me for a long time. You've already heard me say this a million times, but, um, after going vegetarian, which was 31 years ago, uh, I ne- I've never to this day had a headache again. I've never had a headache after going, uh, vegetarian. And before that I used to get pounding headaches all the time, fever, stuff like that. I haven't experienced that in 31 years. Yeah, that can be tricky being in a relationship with somebody that's not vegan. Who wants to kiss somebody after they just drink a glass of milk or eat chicken or fish. Not me. Oh, Ava, I didn't see that. Uh, I'm sorry for your loss there. Matthew Kenny, is he even vegan still? all the food pyramid and nutrition stuff to promote consumerism. Yeah, there's a lot of that in the uh, the fake food pyramid of all the stuff that they want you to buy and all the stuff that they subsidize. It's a shame. People should just all go vegan. Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, I, it's probably, um, actually, I don't know, but um, it's probably a little bit different. Like when somebody goes vegan, like they learn about vegan, and then they go vegan while they're already in a relationship and the other person doesn't want to do it. Then somebody that seeks out somebody um, and starts dating somebody that they already know that they're not vegan, but they are vegan. That probably is a little... A little bit different there because you're already, you know, going into it knowing that the other person is not vegan. Yeah, um, it, it's important, like, if you're going to be with somebody uh, to have them at least on the same level as their thoughts on, you know, compassion. Like they know that you feel a certain way about, you know, animals and not hurting or eating them. And then it's almost like they don't even, they don't even care. It's like, it just look, you know, look at, look at this, you know, do you know how many times I've tried to explain that to my parents and stuff? It's a different kind of relationship, but like 
it's somebody that you care about, but they they just don't they don't see it like that, or they just don't care. Yeah, I, I couldn't I couldn't do that. I wouldn't be able to do that. I have been in relationships in the past where where my my girlfriends were not vegan, but for some reason like I was the one that would always cook, so they would always eat vegan, like ninety nine percent of the time. Um, there was not that compassion, that ethics or anything, but they would at least always eat vegan. And when we would go shopping for food, we would always buy vegan food. It was just like during like holidays and stuff, they would eat not vegan with their family. And then I, and then I was dating, um, uh, a, a, another girlfriend who was vegan and then all of a sudden wanted to, uh, work out at the gym and her trainer said, you're not going to get the results you're looking for on a vegan diet. So, you know, mid being vegan for like, you know, however many years she was vegan, all of a sudden we went to Wegman and she said, she started putting stuff in the cart and I was like, what, what are you doing? And she started putting like tuna and, you know, non-vegan yogurt. And I'm like, what, I, seriously? And she just wasn't vegan anymore. So, um, heavy metal vegan. Thank you again for the, uh, super chat. The heavy metal vegan, three ninety nine. Appreciate that. That's that's two. I appreciate it. All right. We've answered a lot of questions on this one. And if you're just joining us and you're looking at the title of the video, we open that vegan cuts box. Uh, at the beginning, so you guys can always rewind it and check it out. Uh, Deviant for Life, what's up? I, I didn't look at the name, I just looked at your capital letter, what you said, and it's Deviant has arrived, so I'm looking up, I'm like, where? where? Oh, you said it, I got gotcha. Yeah, that's what I heard. I, I don't think that Paul is vegan. I think he's a vegetarian. There's so many celebrities that they claim that are vegan that are not not vegan. Or celebrities that go vegan and use the limelight of veganism. And then, like, I mean, Miley Cyrus, um, um, her, her ex-boyfriend Liam... Uh, Ellen, Ellen took up the, all the publicity of being vegan when she was selling leather and eating eggs and who, who knows what, what not, what else. So yeah, you, you never know with the celebrities. I mean, you do know with Moby, Moby's uh, a diehard vegan and so is Joaquin Phoenix and there's some other ones, Woody Harrelson and, um, but, um, Yeah. That's always my thing. Like, if if you're gonna like say something about a vegan celebrity, is are they still gonna be vegan in another year or two? Kind of thing. Andre three thousand is he a is he a diehard vegan? It's always good to see some of these vegans that you never knew. I guess. Um, Richard Marks is vegan. Um, long time. I'm thinking of the long time vegans. Oh, I heard Brian Adams is a long time vegan. You never, you never know. Uh, he's been vegan for like thirty plus years. Well, I heard uh, also um, Bobcat Goldthwait is a vegan. He was a longtime vegetarian. He's in one of my videos. Um, but I heard that... Uh, I heard by... I'm friends with his relatives, so... They told me actually last night that, that he's vegan. 
they they actually um my friend reached out to me to ask me about some vegan cream cheeses she was going to make some uh chicken wing dip vegan chicken wing dip because um bobcat's in town rizza is hard, hardcore vegan what did i just watch with him in it I don't remember. I was how do I not remember? I just watched something. Uh, maybe I'll think of it. Yeah, I, I heard Sam Jacklin's not vegan anymore. His um, I think his niece interviewed him, did a vegan interview with him. He's like, I didn't ask you a. Uh, what's up, creepy vegans? Better late than never. You missed the uh, opening of the snack box, but that's okay. We're doing a we're doing a a Q and A right now. No, I don't think it was with Russell Crowe. It was something I ju I literally just watched. Um, what did I just watch? Was he in Was he in Fear nineteen ninety four? That just came out. I think that's the last movie I watched. Somebody Google that for me. The man with the iron fist. Yeah, that's really weird that the Dalai Lama is not vegan. But Ricky Gervais is now vegan because I knew that he promotes vegan all the time. But I but I heard that he wasn't vegan, that, that he still ate some cheese and stuff. Cheese was the thing that didn't do it. But that's awesome if he's vegan now. That's That's really cool. Yeah, he probably knew he was being a little bit hypocritical on that point. Uh, Defoe says, hello, vegan for four months. Can't go back. I know too much now. Congrats. I'm proud of you. I'm just going to, um, let's see. Yeah. I can't remember what I watched. Anyway, maybe maybe I could just uh, maybe it was just a preview for something. Maybe I didn't watch anything. Maybe it was a preview. Uh, Kate G, um, five dollar super chat. Love from Australia. Oh, that's why it says the A in front of it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kate. I appreciate that. How is it in Australia? What time is it in Australia right now? It's probably like tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon. Today afternoon for you, but tomorrow for us. Thank you. What's the weather like in Australia? Isn't it winter right now in Australia? Love from Kathmandu, Nepal. I was just talking about Nepal last night. Um, weird synchronicities here, but um, Siraj, thank you. Um, hi, from, from uh, New York, U.S., Vegan hair products. Uh, I've been using what's it called? Loma, Loma, Loma. The hair uh, shampoo and conditioner called Loma. Look at, just wash my hair. Oh, it's a movie that's coming out. Okay, good. Okay, so now I can just forget about that. Uh, vegan Lee says not a deal breaker. I mean, it's not your equipment. You can't find a gym with vegan covers and equipment. You kind of. Oh, are you still vegan if you're going to a gym that doesn't have vegan covers? No, no. I mean, that's that's ridiculous. Yeah, there's a lot of. Th I mean, you. Yeah, that's that's fine. 
you're going to a gym. Like, do you know how many things would be broken down and uh, argued to be hypocritical if, if that were the case? I mean, literally, if people are going to say you're not vegan, be I mean, I have people say that all the time about me. Like, you're literally not even vegan. You drive a car and I'm like, you literally don't know the definition of veganism. So, like, I mean, you could... If you were that pedantic about it, you would literally have to live in a cave and be careful not to step on any ants or any kind of bugs as you're living in this cave and grow your own food in a little bubble and make sure you're not taking... Like, seriously, it would be so ridiculously... You just, you know, come on. Vegan is the implicit um, you know, not consciously not causing animals harm in, in uh, the most practical, practicable way you can. Like the biggest ways you can do that are to just n choose not to put them in your mouth and eat them, uh, wear them, and exploit them. You know, those are the three basic things to start living your life as a vegan and start to find other, uh, other choices. Like instead of buying this, buy that. And then you start abiding by those and then you can, you know, bring it a little bit further if you want, you know. Um, but those are, the, those are the things you need to look out for. It's just, you know, don't eat them. It's one thing that we can do for veganism because it's one thing that every human on this planet has to do is eat. We all need to eat to stay alive. And we can choose whether to put an animal in our mouth or plant in our mouth to eat. So... It's, it's, it's really that simple. When you break it down to how simple it is, it's, it's, it's really easy to go vegan. I do have the Robert Cheek uh, plant-based athlete. Um, I haven't read it yet. I've been super busy uh, doing movie stuff. But um, I'm slow at reading stuff. But yes, uh, I do have it. I got a couple new books in the, in the mail. I got... Um, Where's the other one I have? There's another one around here somewhere. I don't know where it is right now. I featured on another on another video though. Yeah, hopefully someday in the future. I think the the future is going to uh, be vegan, so um, if people still need their meat, then they get that lab grown meat. Doesn't sound too good, does it? But neither does, um, having the animals sit there and suffer all their life. So I think lab grown meat is going to be a, a good, a good thing for, um, to combat animal agriculture. And even if they want, they could start with pet food. Pet food accounts for so much here in this country, at least. You hate when someone tells you you're vegan because you're a city person and do not understand. Now, I think it's the people that say that that don't really understand. They, are they understand? Are they even taking the things that they supposedly understand into consideration? That if there wasn't for these subsidies, they wouldn't be in business at all because it takes way more money to raise animals to use animals because look at all the if, if anybody could actually see okay so um let's see going over to mockingbird farm sanctuary and seeing sophie the cow a 2200 pound cow and just seeing how much she eats and drinks in a day and you want to times that by all the cows that they're raising. Do you know how much money they have to buy of food just to feed these animals? Do you know how much water they drink just for these per day? These animals, 
eat way more than we, they probably eat more in a day than we eat in half a year to a year. It's crazy. And um, yeah, people don't understand how much money goes into producing this stuff. And it's all subsidized so that they can continue to do this. If it wasn't, they'd be out of business so long ago. Is my book a physical book or just an ebook? Unfortunately, right now it's just an ebook. But it does exist. There is a physical book. It's just I'm out of them. I, these are the only ones I have left, and the printer stopped printing them, so I need to get them republished. But there is a physical copy that exists, and it's in three languages. If you don't, if you speak French or German, you can still get those. But um, yes. Those are all I have left right there. Those couple of one's German, one's French, and uh, the rest are these ones. And I figured I might as well keep maybe five or six of them just because they're gone for hopefully not forever, but they're gone right now. Oh, Chris, yes, that would that would that would probably work out. And they got the funds to do so that Beyond Meat should start their own fast food chain. <laughs> you heard someone say you're vegan, what are you a Democrat? Yeah, the the funny thing is, um vegans are everybody. It doesn't matter what your political view is, everybody can be a vegan. What's up, Mantis? Meat free every day, unless it's plant meat, then I'm eating it. <laughs> That's awesome, yeah. Um, then you probably could have your cat be, uh, well, a compassionate cat. I don't know if it would still be vegan since it's like lab grown, but you're, you know, because cats, you know, are obligate carnivores. That'd be a great way for, you know, to reintroduce cat food um, without killing animals. Lab grown meats, lab grown pet foods, probably a lot cleaner too without all those antibiotics and hormones. Probably a lot healthier for people um, than eating actual animals. Lab grown. Maybe they can genetically. I mean, I wouldn't need it, but maybe they can genetically um, take all the bad things about it out and just keep, you know, the, the taste and texture in there for people and for animals. So I guess we'll find out, right? Like I said, the future is vegan. It's only getting bigger. Like I said, it's only getting more popular. And the, the years I've been vegan, it went from like nobody even knowing what it was to what it is today. You got huge corporations, huge companies going out there and uh, making making some strides. Um, what did I say? You're from the country, and it's a big reason why you're vegan, creepy vegans. I am too. I'm from the country too. I mean, I'm my I'm from a small little town, about 35, 40 minutes from where I live now, and we were surrounded by cornfields and farms and all of that stuff. And you could even smell, and some certain times of the year, you could smell when they would spread the manure over the fields to fertilize the corn and stuff, and it would just come down. It would all smell. That's where I'm from. Um, do you think they'll have lab grown human meat? I would hope not, but, uh, yeah, you're probably, yeah, they probably will. Oh wait. Yes, they will. Because I saw, I read an article or something where they had lab grown celebrity human, like you could get the DNA for whatever celebrity you wanted to buy and they would replicate the meat for you. Gross, disgusting. I, I don't know. I think it was real, too. I don't think it was. 
Well, I did read it. Maybe it wasn't real. Maybe it was like an, I don't think it was the Onion article or something. I don't know. I did read it though, so I wouldn't be surprised. Don't quote me on whether it was real or not. I thought it was, but maybe it wasn't. No, I haven't had Brave Robot ice cream. I don't think I've ever seen it around here. Now, that is vegan? Now, here's what I don't understand. Is it vegan or did they take did they genetically modify an actual dairy cell to do that? Cuz if they did that, I I'm not going to eat it. But if it's actually completely vegan and there's nothing in it that's from any kind of dairy, then I would give it a try. But when they start replicating the exact cells, I don't I don't want to go there. I just want to I want to eat everything from plants. I'm okay with the way that everything I'm they have some really, really good things that I am totally more than content with that I don't need to have a replica of, a, of something that's dairy. So I don't know if that's the case with this or not, but. I'm trying to catch up on these, these comments here. Let's see if I missed something. Defoe, I do stream on Twitch. I'm the vegan zombie over on Twitch, but there's no E at the end of my name. I think there's a link right in the bottom of this video too for it. Um, I usually stream either EverQuest or Chess or something like that. Sometimes Star Citizen. Um, that's right, Holly. Some people do eat human meat already. You're in East Tennessee. I was just talking about visiting Tennessee. I've never been to Tennessee. I'm seeing other people's comments and then I'm going back up to see what the other people said. I gotta catch up here. Catch up. Oh yeah, they do. And and actually I think that that would be wouldn't that be you know, they have like laws to not do this, but don't you think it would be better to be able to clone um like human tissue as far as like let's say you had a bad liver or a bad kidney, they could take your own body and regrow a brand new healthy liver that won't be rejected by your body cuz essentially it is your body and then, you know, I think that would be great, you know, then it would be, you know, there wouldn't be this black market for like kidneys and stuff. And, um, you know, I feel like they could probably already do this. Like, why aren't they? I don't know. But, um, you know, people that go blind, maybe they can regenerate new eyes and et cetera. I know I haven't, I haven't heard from Matt in a while. Uh, yeah, I miss Matt. Wonder how he's doing. You have somebody else's skin on your leg. See, I don't understand why they couldn't graft, like they couldn't like make your own skin. I mean, I know they can probably do that, so why don't they do that? They take it from other people. They'll take it from a cadaver. They'll take it from another part of your own body. It's like, but I need the skin down there. Why are you taking it from down there? That's happened to my dad too, where he's had to take different parts of his and put it other places of his body. Um... They need a growth medium so they grow it in, a, in an animal. Why can't they just use other human uh, cells? They can't grow it in like uh, some kind of, I don't know. You know they've probably already done this and they're just not telling us. 
I mean, they cloned freaking sheep back 30 years ago, so they can probably do it. <laughs> Just saying. It just seems so much. I would rather do that, you know, like, hey, grow me a new liver of my own body than rather put in something else. You know, I mean, my my, my good friend, uh, he had a kidney transplant. He's doing great. But for the rest of his life, unless, you know, technology changes, he's got to take, um, you know, anti-rejection medicine, which lowers his immunity. So his body doesn't reject the, the kidney. <laughs> Mr. Potato Head. Now there's a name I haven't heard in a long time. A long time. How would I feel if I needed surgery and it involved using animal parts? Um, well, it depends what kind of surgery, for one. If it was a life-saving surgery where if I didn't get it, I would die, then I would say, okay. Um, and that's just survival. And uh, the way I see it is I want to live. At the end, I want to live um, my life over the other. Because I don't think many people would choose the latter, I don't think. And... Uh, you know, that way I can advocate for, you know, maybe 20, 30 more years um, saving more animals, hopefully longer than that. So if it came down to losing my life, yeah, I wouldn't. Because let's let's put it this way. if How many people, you might say this now, but how many people, how many people would actually really say if they had the impossible choice for somebody to say, I'm going to put this bullet in this animal or in your head? I think coming down to it, most people would say, not their head. So let's just put it that way. Teeth transplants. Like if I had to get a heart valve or something, my heart was going to stop. And the only way I could do it by using like something from like they do with a, you know, pig heart or whatever. You know, it's not something you want to think about, but, you know, I mean, if it ever came down to that, you know, that's, I think people are lying if they say otherwise. The island. I feel like it, oh, wait. The island. Oh, no, I'm thinking of that other one that was, was it called Platform? Where they're on this platform, for like, a weird sci-fi futuristic movie. So Island. I don't know if I saw the Island. Um, glad you had fun, Holly. We'll talk to you later. Yeah, I should probably get going soon, too. How long have we been on? I feel like time is just uh, going by so fast, right? We've been on, oh, almost two hours? I thought it was more like an hour, but yeah, we've been on for almost two hours. So I'm going to have to get going, too. Yeah, okay. All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks for uh, hanging out tonight. And uh, go check out that video that I just posted if you guys want to check out the vegan grocery store that I went to. And uh, sneak peek with Cesar. So he's always fun to have in the videos. So if you haven't seen that yet, go check it out, share it, comment below. Let's get the algorithm up. And we got some fun new videos uh, coming out that I'll be editing for you guys. So. All right. I will uh, talk to you all later. Stay safe. Watch out for zombies. I'll see you guys next time.